representative. Uh, maybe slight problem in this because we have to deal with the uh, whether it's an institution uh, which is the government accepting the amendment or I am not. How yeah. can you not accept it? Uh, accept an amendment by Parliament, Mr. Solicitor? Indestructible. And I, I can't will... hear the government of India to say that an amendment which Parliament made is something I don't stand by. You have to stand. As a law officer, it is my right as well as my Lord, entitlement and duty to say that this view appears to be correct. And third, but third, Mr. Solicitor, you... this will be very this will... answer that. Would a law officer be expected to say that whatever amendments were, were made in the Constitution of India during emergency? But Mr. Solicitor, allow me to complete. That's why the 44th amendment. I will not came raise in. that point. Mr. That's why the 44th amendment. Let others argue, Lord. If that is so, Lord, I will not raise if, it. If the 44th. But therefore, I say the way court mandates. Only consisting of Muslims with the provision now. Let's quickly run through this charge so that we can go on to the next. Yeah, but when I say need not be Muslim means the law doesn't require him to be Muslim. He may be Muslim, he may be any other religion. Chancellor need not be Muslim, pro-chancellor need not be Muslim. But throughout, I'm not reading it, up to proctor need not be Muslim. Then representatives of the department and colleges need not be Muslim. Some, some expert, my lord, in a chemical uh, engineering branch may be sent as a member, my lord. He may not be Muslim. He may happen to be a Muslim. But the law doesn't say that a representative of department of colleges belonging to Muslim community. That's not the law. Need, therefore, my lord, I am carefully using the word need not be Muslim. Okay, this, uh, the chart in x -ray is pre-1981 or post-1981? As on day, as it stands. And, and what is the position pre-81? I have said, the court is concerned, it was full uh, Muslims. Till 51 amendment, it was deleted. 1951 amendment, which was deleted. I'll show that comparative. Uh, so this, this is as, a, as it exists today. As it exists today. And as it exists today, my lord, if your lordships were to go, uh, need not be Muslim. Lord, when I say, my Lord, representative, uh, maybe slight problem in this because we have to deal with the uh, whether it's an institution uh, which was minority or not as on the date when the constitution. Correct. This is irrelevant according to my submission. So this 1981 amendment may not be so much or post 1981 yes. may not be so much uh, because if it was a minor, you can to that extent there is no list of between the two sides. If it was a minority institution as on the date in 1950, then uh, it will continue to be a minority institution. Not that difficult. And because they have challenged, some of them have challenged the 1981 amendment also. Yes, yes. That, that's the issue. That I, I'll come to that, my lord. And there, when the bill was introduced, it was introduced on the ground that Congress had that in the mani election manifest. That, there was a that was the ground. And there is a beautiful opposition by an eminent parliamentarian who was an eminent counsel of this court, Somnath Chetan, that you can't do this. This is not the way you take away basis of the judgment. I'll, I'll come to that. But my Lord, uh, there are only 35 persons who can be Muslims out of 189, as on date. Who can be Muslims, my Lord, I'm saying. Mandate, no mandate that they have to be Muslims. For example, my Lord, representatives of alumni, past alumni. But there are all community students who are studying here. They have engineering college, management college, uh, medical college, everything. Maybe uh, other community people may represent the, that constituency of alumni. Two persons representing Urdu language, Malod, for example. He may not be a Muslim, Malod, but an expert in Urdu. There are people who are experts in Urdu. They, they can Malod, uh, be the representatives. So, therefore, I carefully use the word need not be Muslim. The law doesn't require them to be Muslim. But 39, 35 people, 37 people may be Muslim. I am against, they also don't require Muslim. Please, my Lord, come to page, uh, my Lord, page 8. What is the reason to bring in representatives of Muslim culture and learning? There is one of the subjects. 
the way a lot other subjects are taught why did they at all have to bring in people who are representatives of muslim there is a culture and garva there is what is the need to bring in say representatives of the all india muslim education conference what is the genesis I, of I, that i'm not just you know if your lordship sees there are several subjects being taught lord uh, in there, there is malod a separate constituency representatives of teachers other than chairman and department and principals of colleges so they have representation chemistry will have a representation medicine uh, biology etc etc but one of the malod uh, subjects out of several is muslim theology and muslim culture therefore they have representation but therefore it it does not say the provision does not say they will be muslims muslim cultural association will send five people they may be muslims they may send others also so therefore i say what is required as per kerala education bill is sprinkling of outsiders this is not sprinkling of outsiders this is predominant outsider if i may use that expression nobody is is an outsider but predominant non minority people yes no i'll now lord come to lord i'll just show the chart my lord uh, my lord be changed my lord by they are not in... changing a historical fact they are changing the provision of an act which was inconsistent with the historical fact so as to bring it in conformity lord, with the historical fact lord, i mean there is an alternative appreciate, possible lord kindly lord, appreciate for one more thing this is a amendment by the parliament correct and I, is the government accepting the amendment or i am not how yes. can you not accept it uh, accept an amendment by parliament yes. mr solicitor parliament is an eternal indestructible body under the indian union correct my lord and continuing and irrespective irrespective of which government represents the cause of the union no, of no, india no no i am not saying I, I, parliament's I cause parliament's cause is eternal indivisible and indestructible and i, I mean, can't hear the government of india to say that an amendment which parliament made is something i don't stand by you have to stand by this amendment Lord, allow me to answer that my lord you uh, have an option you go through the amending answer. you have allow an you have an option go through the amending route and change the amending allow, act again need to answer that question yes, ultimately pa, ultimate power my lord allow me to answer that question my lord i am not arguing a matter of a versus b i am before a seven judge constitution bench answering constitutional questions that is number 1 number 2 the amendment in question was subjected to challenge before the high court and there is a judgment declaring that it is unconstitutional for abcd grounds and as a law officer it is my right as well as my lord entitlement and duty to say that this view appears to be correct and third third But mr solicitor this will be very this will be this will be radical because a law officer will be then telling us that i don't abide by what parliament has done my lord in that case in that you case i have to stand by what parliament has done but parliament is supreme parliament is undoubtedly supreme in its law making function parliament can always amend a statute in which case the law officer can say well i have an amended statute now which i am going lord, to place because your lordships expect can we, but can we can we hear can we hear any organ of the union government to say that notwithstanding a parliamentary amendment i don't accept this amendment lord i am supporting the judgment would your lordship my lord that sense parliament please allow me to answer parliament this parliament is that's why i said parliament is an eternal indivisible and in this and an indestructible entity under the democracy no, i am not disputing that but my lord would you i am posing a question to myself how can you would say I... That, look i don't i don't accept the validity of an amendment hmm? I don't but, accept. I do. I don't accept that there was a ground for amendment. Can I? Comment. Can I answer? It, it's more of a lot of one-sided there, but yes. can I answer that? Would a law officer be expected to say that whatever amendments were were made in the Constitution of India during emergency were true only because they were made by the Parliament? Here I have a judgment of the super. No, but, I but only admit. But Mr. Sir, allow me complete. That's why the forty-fourth amendment. I will not raise that point, Mr. That's why the forty-fourth amendment. Let others argue, Mr. Lord. If that is so, Mr. Lord, I will not raise if, it. If the forty-fourth amendment Lord, came in only for that, the forty-fourth amendment came to redress the evils which were 
perpetrated in the name of a constitutional you know, amendment. Who will decide, my lord, that these are evils being perpetrated? Obviously, exactly. You, you, you prove my point. It, the power to decide that is in the elected body of the people, which is parliament. My lord, there is... Parliament can always say that what we did during the emergency was wrong and we are rectifying it lord, by the... Not of the after it is set aside by the division bench of a high court, my lord, and therefore it is not on the statute book. And when I am not in A versus B situation, I am in a constitution bench answering a legal proposition, whether such a thing can be done or not. And if I do not do, and there is an affidavit filed by the government, it's not my stand, it could have been my stand also. also. But if I cannot argue, my lord, that this amendment could not have been made, I will have to support, I means any law officer will have to support every amendment made during emergency irrespective of my lord whether it is my view or anybody else's view that this was to uh, remove some anomalies or some uh, bad things happening to the citizens of india